And I want to say this to the television audience. I made my mistakes. But in all of my years of public life, I have never profited, never profited from public service. He was the first American president to resign from the job. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be learning more about the life and accomplishments of Richard Nixon. People have got to know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. Richard Milhouse Nixon was born January 9, 1913, in Yorba Linda, California. During his modest and conservative Quaker upbringing, he became a skilled debater. He won a scholarship to the Duke University School of Law and graduated in 1937. After attempting to join the FBI, Nixon practiced law in Whittier, California. In 1938, he met Pat Ryan and they married two years later. Pat doesn't have a mink coat, but she does have a respectable Republican cloth coat. And I always tell her that she'd look good in anything. In 1942, Nixon enrolled in the U.S. Navy. After serving in the Pacific Theater of World War II and rising to lieutenant commander, he returned to civilian life in 1946. Nixon and his family then moved back to Whittier, where he ran as a Republican for Congress. He won, and two years later, he was easily re-elected. During his congressional term, he rose to national prominence as a member of the House Un-American Activities Committee when he proved instrumental in breaking a prominent Soviet spy case. At the end of 1949, Nixon ran for the United States Senate. During this campaign, he was given his enduring nickname, Tricky Dick. In 1952, Dwight D. Eisenhower chose the 39-year-old senator as his vice presidential candidate. Scandal hit when Nixon was accused of maintaining a slush fund of contributions. Nixon defended himself to 60 million Americans with a televised address on September 23, 1952. Black and white, spotted. And our little girl, Tricia, the six-year-old, named it Checkers. And you know, the kids, like all kids, love the dog. And I just want to say this right now, that regardless of what they say about it, we're going to keep it. The public responded favorably to the Checkers speech, and the Eisenhower-Nixon ticket won the election that year. During his two terms as vice president, Nixon managed important foreign and domestic issues. He also made high-profile journeys overseas. One example was his visit to the Soviet Union, where he spontaneously debated Nikita Khrushchev on the merits of capitalism versus communism. In 1960, Nixon ran for president against Democrat John F. Kennedy. The unprecedented series of televised debates was a turning point in the campaign. Nixon's physical appearance compared to Kennedy's was sickly, and this helped lead to his narrow defeat in the election. Nixon then returned to California to write. In 1962, he ran for state governor, and his loss signaled to many the end of his political career. He did not run for president in 1964, and Lyndon Johnson humiliated the Republicans at the polls. Despite everything, Nixon remained a GOP star, and in 1968, he made another run at the presidency. With Johnson's withdrawal, the ongoing Vietnam War, and the assassination of star Democrat Robert F. Kennedy, it was a turbulent time. This is the first time in the history of this country that a presidential con candidate could honestly come before an American audience and say that respect for the United States around the world is in jeopardy. The Republicans capitalized on this, and on November 5, 1968, Richard Nixon was elected the 37th President of the United States. Having lost a close one eight years ago, and having won a close one this year, I can say this, winning's a lot more fun. <laughs> While in office, Nixon dealt with an unstable economy and oversaw reforms in welfare, civil rights, and more. In foreign affairs, Nixon helped end the Vietnam War, re-established contact with China, and improved relations with the Soviet Union. In 1972, Nixon was re-elected in a landslide victory. However, his undoing was already in the works. The Democratic National Committee is trying to solve a spy mystery. It began before dawn Saturday when five intruders were captured by police inside the offices of the committee in Washington. The five men carried cameras and apparently had planted electronic bugs. A few months prior to his re-election, a group of men linked to the Nixon administration was arrested at the Democratic Party headquarters in Washington's Watergate complex. And what followed was one of the biggest scandals in presidential history. 
The Watergate scandal was revealed as a cover-up by the Nixon administration to hide involvement in illegal activities against their opponents. It ultimately led to Nixon's resignation from the presidency on August 9, 1974. I have never been a quitter. To leave office before my term is completed is abhorrent to every instinct in my body. Nixon was granted a full pardon by the Ford administration a month later. A few years later, he was paid $600,000 by British TV personality David Frost for a string of in-depth television interviews. Well, when the president does it, that means that it is not illegal. By definition. Exactly. Between 45 and 50 million people watched the Frost-Nixon interviews when they aired in 1977. The last decades of Nixon's life were spent rebuilding his reputation as a best-selling author, senior statesman, and foreign policy specialist. On April 22, 1994, Nixon died after suffering a massive stroke 10 months after his wife's passing. He is remembered by many as the face of the embarrassing Watergate scandal. However, Richard Nixon's contributions to world peace also helped shape his legacy. But as I leave you, uh, I want you to know, just think how much you're going to be missing. You don't have Nixon to kick around anymore. Mm -hmm.